In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So says the angel of the Lord to Joseph in our gospel reading for tonight. But of course, Jesus' name wasn't actually Jesus. Jesus is how English translations have rendered the name that appeared in the original Greek manuscripts as Jesus. But Jesus was not his name either. Rather, it was the Greek rendering of the Hebrew name Yeshua, the shortened version of Yehoshua. In other words, if we are being consistent with how we translate names between the Old Testament and the New, we would call our Lord Joshua the same name as the successor of Moses. Now, it's not a coincidence that Jesus shares this name with this Old Testament figure. Joshua means deliverer or savior. And just as Joshua delivered his people out of the slavery in Egypt and into the promised land, completing the work of Moses, Jesus had been born to deliver us out of the slavery of sin and into his kingdom. When Joshua led the conquests of this land, he defeated the enemy forces and saved his people from them. And when the baby born in Bethlehem's manger became the man who went to the cross, he defeated the the enemy, the devil, and saved his people from the sins that had placed them into Satan's hands. Joshua saved earthly lives and delivered into earthly homes. And thus he pointed forward to the one who would save our souls and deliver us into eternal dwellings. There's a reason that Joshua and the new Joshua, the one we call Jesus, share the same name. But even though these two men are similar, they're not identical, not by a long shot. And nowhere is this difference clearer than in in the way that these two men saved and delivered. Joshua did these things by being a man of violence, by shedding the blood of his enemies and his people's enemies. But Christ did these things by being a man of peace, by allowing his blood to be shed by his enemies in order that we would no longer be the enemies of God. And because of Satan's corruption of mankind, we were those enemies. In Joshua 3, the Lord promises to remove the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Hivites through the hand of Joshua. And through our sins, through our hatred of God, our selfishness, through our pride, our anger, our lust, our disobedience, through our idolatry, our greed, and covetousness, we corrupted our hearts and made Canaanites, Hittites, and Hivites of ourselves. We earned God's wrath, earned the right for him to condemn us, to tear us to pieces, to bleed us dry and leave us for dead as punishment for the evil we brought into this world, just as Joshua did to the enemies of Israel. So through our sins, we became enemies of God and ultimately enemies of ourselves. But out of his love, God sent his only begotten son to shed his own blood in our place. And that's exactly what Christ did. Out of love for his enemies, Jesus Christ, the new Joshua, went to the cross and covered us with his forgiveness. He washed us in his mercy, made us clean by taking upon himself every one of our iniquities. By becoming a victim of our war against God, Christ took the weapons of sin out of our hands and made us at peace with his Father. By breathing his last for us at Calvary, Jesus breathed out his Father's love upon us. Unlike the first Joshua, Jesus didn't take the lives of his enemies. He took the punishment for his enemies. He gave his life for them, and through his resurrection, he gave all who believe in him the right to live forever, the right to spend eternity in the presence of the God who has conquered his enemies by making them his very children. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. So on the night when Christ was born, Jesus, Jesus, Yehoshua came into this world. On that night, the new Joshua arrived, sent by God to do the work promised by the first Joshua, sent to save and deliver us from our sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. And because he did exactly that through his death and resurrection, then tonight we can all be at peace as we contemplate the infant face of Christ, as we consider the child wrapped in swaddling clothes. We can be at peace knowing that the new Joshua has wrapped us in the robe of his righteousness and covered us in the love of God. As we consider the son of Mary resting in his mother's arms, we can be at peace. Because no matter how much trouble the world gives, it cannot take us out of the arms of our Father in heaven. Arms made our own through the bloody cross and empty tomb of the new Joshua. Tonight, as we look out upon a world that is not at peace with itself, and as we look within our hearts, we find so much evidence of our war raging against God. And yet, when we hear the angel's song of peace on earth and goodwill toward men, we can believe in that peace because Jesus Christ has given it to us. Through his blood, he has delivered us into the kingdom that this raging world will never be able to conquer. Through his sacrifice, he has saved us from those sins and made us one with his Father. Tonight, our hearts and souls can be at peace because the babe of Bethlehem's manger became the new Joshua at Calvary's cross. The new Joshua who gives the true, who gives the promised land, the very kingdom of heaven itself to all who believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.